Hello everyone, my name is Manasi and uh, I am one of your TAs for the Spring 2022 Introduction to Deep Learning course. So today's recitation is on remote notebooks. Um, so uh, you'll be using uh, IPython notebooks to write down your Python code, majorly in uh, your homework part two, which are going to be your Kaggle competitions. Um, and I'm assuming that you must have uh, set up uh, AWS uh, so as to run your Python codes on GPUs. Um, you can access these IPython notebooks through uh, remote servers such as EWS and there are ways to do it. You can look it up on the internet. Uh, but the focus for today's recitation is uh, how to use this IPython notebook. And I'm going to demonstrate uh, um, uh, you, uh, uh, IPython notebooks uh, using one such environment called Jupyter Lab. So Jupyter Lab is uh, the latest web-based uh, interactive development environment uh, for writing these uh, IPython notebooks. Um, also, you can debug code using Jupyter Lab. Um, so let's first quickly start with how do you install Jupyter Lab? You just have to write a uh, pip install um, Jupyter Lab uh, on your terminal, and that's all. You have the installation ready. Um, how do you launch Jupyter Lab? Um, you just have to write down this command, Jupyter Space Lab, and it uh, will launch Jupyter Lab on a web browser. So as you can see it here. All right, so um, this is a typical IPython notebook. And uh, in a IPython notebook, you'll be writing your code uh, in cells. So these are basically different kinds of cells. So um, there could be uh, three different kinds of cells in this Jupyter Lab. Uh, it could be code, it could be marked down, or it could be draw, and you can select it from this drop down. Uh, so this particular thing is a markdown cell. This is a code cell. Um, so there are also different shortcuts that can be used uh, in order to add or delete cells. For example, you have the cell already present. Um, you could just use DD in order to delete it. Um, you could uh, press just A in order to add, add a cell above. You could press just B in order to add a cell below. Uh, now, these are all of the shortcuts that uh, are used in the command mode, uh, which means at this point, you're not editing anything in the cell. So there are two modes briefly, command mode and edit mode. So whenever you're editing something in the cell, it, you're in the edit mode. And if you just press escape, uh, now there's no cursor in the cell. So basically right at this point, you're in the command mode and you could use all of these shortcuts to add or delete cells. Um, so um, let's have a quick tour of the interface uh, of Jupyter Lab. So if you could see, we, we can have like different kinds of files. Uh, you can have a Python console, you can have notebook, which is this IPython notebook. You can have a terminal text file and a markdown file. Um, so let's quickly have a look at uh, how to write readme files. So readme file is a, a simple markdown file. And um, you can uh, add these heading levels in the readme file. So let's quickly have a look at the preview. Um, so I'll just open it with a markdown preview. And you can see that uh, heading level one, two, and three um, uh, is being demonstrated um, in the form of uh, different number of uh, pound symbols that you will use um, in order to put these headings. Um, then you, you can also have different kinds of uh, bullet markings, uh, which can be also found here. Um, you can also add a super link in this manner. So you could just click on IDL and it opens up the course website. Um, you can have slanted word uh, among single uh, using single asterisks. You can have bold words using double asterisks. You can have character shading. Um, also, you can just have these uh, horizontal lines uh, using three dashes or three asterisks. All of them are going to give you this horizontal line. So uh, there are different. Uh, other things that also that you can do in uh, markdown files like adding images um, and it's uh, you can look it up on the internet and obviously uh, what different kind of things that you can do with a markdown file um, 
So next up is uh, kernels and terminal usage. Um, so as you can see um, in the left panel over here, we have uh, the file browser, this is our normal workspace. The other thing is uh, the open tabs and the kernel. So basically kernel is uh, a computation engine that is going to run your Python code. So um, you can see all these active kernels here. Um, there's also one uh, section for the terminals. Right now there are no active terminals. So I'll just open up a terminal here. You can file new and terminal. So uh, this is just a normal uh, PowerShell uh, uh, that, that opens up. And um, you can run your raw.python files using terminal. So you can have uh, normal uh, .py files like this one that I have here. Um, and you can just run it through Tom terminal. So you don't necessarily have to write an IPython notebook in Jupyter Lab. You could have the .py files as well, and then just run it through the terminal. Um, so next up is uh, variable stories in Python notebooks. So uh, this is something that is really important. Um, so uh, usually whenever we have normal Python IDEs, uh, say something goes wrong within our code, we have to rerun it again right from the top. Um, so uh, this creates sort of some kind of a problem when we have like heavy data loading that is required. So you might be dealing with uh, data which is using size and then you load it into a variable uh, and then you mess up something uh, in the code after that. Um, you have to run it from the top again and that includes reloading the data and that can consume a lot of time. So a normal ID process would look something like this that you load the data and then you uh, access something from uh, uh, the loaded data. Um, so usually this is going to take um, say about 11 milliseconds. This is a really small time for this data set, but the data set could be really large and then it could take about a minute or two in order to just load the data set. Um, but um, the IPython notebooks uh, uh, gives us an advantage over here. What we could do is we could split the entire code into different cells. Um, so we are going to keep the data loading in one of the cells. Uh, and we just have to run it once. And then post that, we could uh, uh, use this loaded data set variable uh, as and when required in the subsequent cells. So if something goes wrong within this cell, we really do not have to do the data loading again. So um, that saves a lot of time for us uh, in my time. Uh, so I'll be talking about two more things of, uh, which are used in this IPython notebook. One is magic functions and another is debugger in the next videos.